Wonder how to create a business that is aligned with your values? Meet Jill Stanton and Josh Stanton. In this interview, our friends and mentors from Screw to 9 to 5 share one of the hardest and best decisions they've ever made to shut down their $330,000 per year membership community after three and a half years. We discuss the importance of alignment in life and business and why, as entrepreneurs, understanding what we want and then doing things that align with that is the only way to be fulfilled and ensured longevity and success. So stick around because this is going to be one epic conversation that will transform your business and your life. Welcome to Founders Connect Podcast. We help lifestyle entrepreneurs to grow their business online and create a happier marriage. Did you know that approximately 45% of marriages end up in divorce and 65% of all startups fail due to founder conflicts? Well, we're here to change that. Each week, we bring you an inspiring guest and practical tips to help you with business, relationships, and sustainable living. Now, let the fun begin! Hi, I'm Cindy Pham. And I'm Anthony Chansomuth. And we're from Founders Founders Connect. Connect. Today, we have the lovely Josh and Jill Stanton, who are the co-founders of Screw the 9 to 5 and their slice of the internet where they help entrepreneurs to build more attention to their brands, make more money in their business and get more out of their life through simple strategies, how-tos and behind the scenes glimpses into the realities of building a business online. So the first question is, how weird are you? <laughs> the A 1 to 10. <laughs> 11. Is there? An 11. 11. <laughs> Like literally, which, we which call scale? ourselves Mr. and Mrs. Weirdo. How many scales so, are there? There's probably like 20 different scales. We're like the peak of weirdness. 19. Yeah. Scale 19. <laughs> One time, Josh <laughs> gave me a Christmas card and it said, To the weirdo from the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we consider ourselves pretty weird. So, yeah, we are <laughs> the weirdos. Did you know that about each other when you met? Like, what was the uh, yeah. hook? For me, it was like the fact that Josh wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so he wants nothing to do with me. Must have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was it. Yep, that's, that's, that's the answer. That's the extent of Josh's game. And then you couldn't get away, could you, Josh? No, well, she couldn't get away from me. You followed me, actually, didn't you? What? Yeah. Not at all. You did. You, you <laughs> no, I did to, not. You moved to Australia. I was already moving to Australia. <laughs> Thank you. That's what she said. She was already moving to Australia. Oh, where was sure. this fool living? China? Where did he move back to when I moved to my Australia? My country. Australia. My, it's my so. country. He invaded my country. <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> awesome. So for those listening, where are you originally from? I'm from the Gold Coast. And I'm from Toronto. Gold Coast, Australia, Toronto, Canada. That's where we are right now too. You're in TO. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to head Knows to the coast in a couple of weeks. So, yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> okay. It does. Next question, Cindy. What's your favorite quote? Favorite quotes. What's your favorite quote? Go on the spot. Um, <laughs> Give me some time to think. I know. I'm like, <laughs> I have a few favorites. Right now, I really love the better it gets, the better it gets. Like, I really love that. I have it as my screen, my phone screen. Oh, that's um, just a bunch of notifications. If you could see it without that, there you go. The better it gets, the better it gets. That's my favorite. Oh. It's my like manifesting mantra right now. That's like way up there for me. I kind of like cycle through quotes. There's always like one main quote that I kind of follow along with during a short period of time, during a certain period of time. And like that was one for a while. One that I'm really thinking about right now because we're building out systems and processes in our business. So a quote I'm using right now to think about every day is complexity is the enemy of execution. Mm. Like the more feeling that flex you make it, the less you're likely to execute. Mostly because we have a track record of making things harder than I think need to be. Every <laughs> every entrepreneur. I know maybe a handful of entrepreneurs who don't try to complicate. And it's only because they've had a lot of experiences where they have complicated things for in the past, got nothing done, and then realize, oh, actually, I should be trying to make things simple. That's one of those things that comes with experience is learning to make business more simple. I mean, that also comes down to this, whether it's a belief or something, and we'll talk about beliefs in a moment. But for me, it's been, if I'm not doing a ton of stuff, I don't feel like I'm actually doing the work, That's right? 
was me that's, for every so, moment of my life up until like a month ago. <laughs> that's work. So work hard equals money is what you're yes. trying to say. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, um, I'm trying to break that. That's up. like a weird one because again, like that one takes a while. One of the things that we really try to focus on through the nine to five is like helping transition employees into entrepreneurs. And the first stage of that transition is mindset is learning how to adjust from the employee mindset into the entrepreneur mindset. Because the employee mindset is essentially, you know, work hard equals money. You get paid based off of your time spent at work. Mm. Whereas an entrepreneur gets paid through their ability to innovate and think, think bigger, think new ideas, save time, all these different factors. It's got less to do with work hard equals money if you want to be an entrepreneur. That's one that I grew up with, hard work equals success. It's been baked into me (laughs) for my whole 37 years on earth. So breaking that belief and that habit and that way of showing up has been one of my biggest challenges. And it's funny because we just came off the back of like three back-to-back promos and a live event and pivoting our business and having a child and all the things. And I said to Josh and our number two, Nikki, the other week, I had nothing to do. And I was like, I don't know what to do right now. I have nothing to do. Someone give me something to do. And Josh said to me, like, you're going to have to learn how to work through that because space is the biggest thing for entrepreneurs. Like you don't have to be doing, doing, doing. That's what employees do. That's Mm -hmm. not what entrepreneurs do. Well, you are doing something. Like if you're doing nothing, see, that's like the trippy part of it is as an entrepreneur, you need to have space in order to think creatively in order to innovate, in order to generate more revenue for the business. And so if you're working all the time, you don't have space to think and innovate, then you're not doing what you need to do as the entrepreneur. So having space is working. It's the same thing. It Um, took me like a day and then I was like, oh, I love this new way of life. Look at me (laughs) for myself. (laughs) But here's the other thing too is I think like there's a spectrum, right? So like some people, they need to have more of that work harder mentality because some people just don't even do anything Mm -hmm. because 80% of business is doing. And I think a lot of people are spending less time than what they need to be doing, like actually the doing work. So I think that's super important. The second thing for this is very clear now, a lot of the studies are showing that productivity after about 25 hours plummets. Like it goes up, 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 and then it just drops off like this. And so... As far as the doing work goes, we've now transitioned to working Monday to Thursday and we don't work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we're doing you know, about 30 hours per week right now because we know after 30 hours, our productivity just plummets. So whatever you're doing in that stage, it's not going to be effective anyway. Mm-hmm. You've got to really start researching and listening to these different ways of working if you want to be a successful entrepreneur. What was it like when you first implemented that, adding the third weekend day, so to speak? Long weekend. Is it- well, <laughs> so long it, weekend. it made it really easy because we had a baby yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and we don't have childcare on Fridays. <laughs> so, and we intentionally did that. Like before we had Kai, we we're like, no, we are going to draw a line in the cement and it's going to be like, we start prioritizing our lifestyle now and like being present for our son. Mm. Because if we hadn't done that, we would have been like on our phone, staying busy, not paying attention to him. That's not how we want to be as entrepreneurs, as parents, just as people. Yeah. And so we intentionally didn't get childcare yeah. for Fridays. And so we were forced to take Friday Kai Days. Now, if we're in a promotion or a launch or something, then yeah, we'll probably trade off and each of us will do a few hours if we have to. But it's a pretty big value to us to you, have four-day work weeks. Do you think it was um, seamless, the transition? I mean, we fought against it because it was so unlike us before. Before that, we were yeah. just pulling all the hours. Because it becomes, you realize like when you do say to yourself, I'm not going to work Friday. And then all of a sudden, like, two weeks go by and then it's Friday and you just like, you start doing work and you realize, man, work is a habit. Mm -hmm. When I work, it's just a habit I get into. So breaking that habit, I think is a cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. Definitely wasn't seamless. It took time. And even tomorrow, I have like a thing scheduled in for tomorrow. I booked something in for Josh. You'll book something in for me. It was the only day that on that chick's schedule. So it's not perfect, (laughs) but we'd like to think that at least, you know, that's a benchmark we want to hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good that you have that goal in there. What did you do and how did you get started? So we got started, Screw the 9 to 5, we didn't actually start as a business. So we first got started together when Jill was doing social media management for clients in Toronto. And I was like working in a software company. 
And so we decided that we wanted to have a location independent lifestyle for ourselves. And we were young, we're still in our 20s at the time. And so we said, okay, what's the best way that we can build a business that's going to give us location independence and also like time freedom as well. And so we looked at different models. We came across affiliate marketing, which is like, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, essentially you acting as like a middleman. So, you know, like someone comes to our website, we recommend a product or a service, whatever. They click on that link, go through, make a purchase of that product. We take a commission for it because it's tracked through that. So we got that up and running. It took us about 10 months before it was full-time income for us. And then we hit that point and we decided to move over to Thailand, which we lived over there for about two years. But that was when we started Screw the 9 to 5. was because a lot of people kept asking us, you know, how are you doing this? Like, how are you moving over to Thailand right now? I don't get how this is possible. Do you work? All this kind of stuff. (laughs) And it was kind of annoying. It was frustrating because we were like writing these long emails back, giving people ideas on what they could do and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, this is really time consuming. And no one's taking action on anything we're talking about or Mm. any advice we offer. Let's just start a website where we talk about, you know, this kind of lifestyle, the lifestyle of screwing the nine to five. And it just started as a wedding week. Just a, yeah, it's on our wedding week. So it just started as a blog essentially. We're just blogging about our journey and what it was like, you know, living location independent lifestyle, running an online business, you know, doing things differently to like how corporate society kind of works. So because of that, it gradually started to get traction because people really, you know, responded to the message of screw the nine mm. to five and then it did eventually turn into a business. That's everything. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. it. It's just been a <laughs> process of, it's been like a six year process of figuring out what works and what doesn't and really getting clear on what we want. Yeah. And then making, molding our business around that. You know, like the big thing too is getting clear to the point where we are living the life that we are trying preach. to preach and present. Mm. to other people coming through our brand. I think that's like a really important thing. Like having that level of self-integrity is very important. And also being transparent and saying, this has been times where we've been trying to work this stuff out. You know, we've had problems, we've been overworked, Mm -hmm. burnt out, all this kind of stuff. And just being open and transparent about journey of what it takes to have this type of business, not like a business where you're working 80 hours a week and you're martyring your life for the sake of creating profits. It's more than that. It's about... You know, having a lifestyle and creating profit as well. Yeah, Kai's like profit, baby. <laughs> I know. Sorry, he's in the background. My bad. Um, that's really interesting how that evolves. And I love the measures of integrity because I think there's a lot of people out there that are not really, you know, the fast car pictures and the planes and everything. And you're like, well, do they really live that way? Or is that more of a, I don't know, they're trying to sell to us. Or, or did they rent that yeah. car for the day? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that shows a lot in Instagram, isn't it? <laughs> the Instagram world. That kind of, uh, picture perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so like true. not that what we want to present is the highlight reel, like R E A L, mm. not the highlight reel, which is you what love I that. Yeah, I do love that. Thing, don't you? Yeah. You say that <laughs> because, all the time. Yeah. Because it it's is the thing. highlight reel on Instagram. And I'm like, nah, F that. This yeah. is the highlight reel, R E A L. I feel like that's what people want. They want to be able to know that they're not totally getting it wrong. And like, not everyone has like Porsches and Lambos and bitches surrounding them. You know? Like, mm. What? We do? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a dream. Not that I'm calling you a bitch. All right? I don't get that right. <laughs> <laughs> they're bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst we're on that topic, so why are you shutting down? You know, you've got a, what is it, 330,000 a year membership community mm-hmm. through you. So why have you decided to shut that down after three and a half years? So we're shutting it down because of the premise we were talking about before, which is living our message, living the message of screw the nine to five. Our message is essentially transforming unsatisfied employees into successful and fulfilled entrepreneurs. And so, you know, if we're not acting, if we're not being fulfilled in our own lives, you know, living the screw the nine to five message, then what are we projecting yeah. out to our people? And so we it looked just at it. Felt so unaligned. Yeah, we looked at it and we're like, okay, how are we showing up right now? Is this current lifestyle that we're living? Is this what we want to project through our message? Is this like the purpose of Screw the 9 to 5, the way that we're currently living right now? And the answer was no. And we actually said to ourselves, you know, what then would be the thing that would be most projecting the message of Screw the 9 to 5? And one of the things that came up was 
always having a choice to change something if you're, you're not, not liking it, it, if you're not yeah. feeling it, not being afraid to make that choice. And I think we just really got clear on what we wanted moving forward. Like we had a kid. We didn't want a business where we have to be online at a certain time for live calls, where our business hinges on us answering questions inside of Facebook. That wasn't what we wanted anymore. Like for the three and a half years we had it, it was so great, right? We loved it. And then it just started changing as our life started changing. And we realized like we wanted a much more simplified business. And we were starting to feel like a bit off on the fact that we were helping people build their business while it felt like ours was suffering. And that just wasn't good enough for us anymore. And it came off the back of asking ourselves a lot of questions like, why do we feel like everything sucks right now? And like, how can we make this feel better? And what do we really want? Like, how do we want to make money? What do we like doing? How do we want to show up? How do we want to serve? What are we trying to accomplish? Are we just going to keep doing what we're doing because it makes money? Like, that's a job. That's it's not job. a business. Exactly. That's definitely you know true. what I mean? That's like showing up because you have to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we quit jobs eons ago to not have to do that. There's no effing chance we're showing up and running a business. One that we have control over and not going to bat for what we want for our life. Once we got clear on that, the decision was so easy. Quote unquote easy. It was really effing hard. Actually, I was really scared everyone would hate us. (laughs) But other than that, it was really easy. (laughs) Yeah, it's funny you said that. I I didn't really feel that. But do you think it's a trapping though that we're seeing a lot of online entrepreneurs get themselves into is they'll bring like the same habits from like the work hard equals money habits into their business. And at first they start their business like, Oh, this is great. Like I work from home and you know, I got like five clients and you know, it's like, this is great. This is fantastic. Then all of a sudden like those five clients like turn into 10 and then their time is absorbed and they're maybe like working more hours now and they've essentially replaced one job for mm-hmm. another, but now they also have to think about other things. They're going to think about bookkeeping, accounting. They're going to think about marketing. They're going to think about like customer support. There's all these other factors start coming in. So, you know, like on the one hand, you're like, when they first get started, people are really excited for it. And then it just turns into a monster. And it's only because they're bringing the same habits from their employee time or time as an employee into the business. And that's like the part that takes a while for people to evolve. And it's even for us, like, this is like a lifelong journey to evolve into a better and a better entrepreneur, essentially. Because, you know, who we are now as entrepreneurs is better than who we were, say, five years ago. Way better. Oh, uh, yeah. Much five more. years from now, we'll have different beliefs altogether. And, yeah. you know, as long as we just keep working on ourselves, keep trying to improve ourselves every single day, just a little bit, then um, I know our future is going to be even better and better. Oh, when you recently shared a post on Insta about increments upgrade. It's oh, yeah. A powerful concept. Can you tell us a bit more about that? You are listening to the Founders Connect podcast, helping lifestyle entrepreneurs to grow their business online and create a happier marriage. Now, back to the show. Yeah. So I learned that from another Aussie, Denise Duffield Thomas. And I was reading her book. Um, I love how you say Aussie. Aussie. <laughs> <Another> Aussie. <laughs> you didn't spend a year in Australia. You still can't say Aussie. I did say Aussie. That's ridiculous. What the, I didn't say Aussie. You're, I don't think you should be allowed back. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, what was I even saying? Oh, yeah. So Denise Duffield Thomas. I was reading her book, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch. And she talks about the power of incremental upgrades. So, so many people say like, this is where I'm at and this is where I want to be, but they can't figure out how to get there when they're here at the moment. And her whole philosophy is like, focus on incremental upgrades up level your baseline of what you're comfortable with and like the level of lifestyle or quality of lifestyle you want and incrementally upgrade the things that make you feel poor so that you're upgrading your lifestyle and the stuff. Well, what is it like the lifestyle, your beliefs, how you show up, what you appreciate, all these different things you're constantly upgrading. So it's not just like one fell swoop. I'll do it once I'm rich. It's like, no, I'll, I'll consciously do mini upgrades now so that I continuously up level who I am. So So that's like, for example, like you identify the little things in your life that make you feel poor or less than wealthy. Can I say one that's really interesting? No. Yeah, I'm going to say one. No, no, no. no, no. This is my thing. One is... Okay, this is ridiculous. (laughs) I just want to say one and 
the interesting part about this is like they're really simple. So, for example, we had a garbage bin that was like sensor bin, yeah. but it broke, right? Mm. And anyway, we were just using this like sensor bin and we were like lifting up the thing on the, like, gu- the tab, on the top of the garbage every time. We we're like, why are we doing this for? <laughs> why are we like having to touch this disgusting bin every time and it doesn't even work anymore? Why are we keeping this bin? Let's just buy a new bin. And so we just like went on like walmart.ca and I found like a really good bin. And so now we have a really good bin that works a lot better. And so, so that's an incremental. It's upgrade. like a little bit. Or like I hated our fireplace tiles. Mm. So I upgraded those. Like just random things. But looking at it every day, I was like, I hate that thing. And it's in our office. So that was such an easy win. Or I started doing keto meal delivery versus cooking every day because I was like, Shit, I have other things to do. Like having a cook all the time makes me feel like I'm not doing as well as I want to be doing. So it was like, A, the same price with so much more convenience and way tastier food. That was an incremental upgrade that I appreciate in such a big way. So now all our meals are done for us. I don't ever have to think about that. Or like my My workouts, my eyelashes, my nails, like all those sorts of things. Just things that make... Yeah, you look so pretty. Just things that make me feel wealthier, make me feel better. Because if you are in the zone that you feel good, you will perpetuate that. You will vibe that out and attract more of that. So the idea of it, like there's a reason why the word incremental is there because it's not like don't upgrade to a point where you're like, oh, I just bought a Tesla even though I can't afford it. You know what I mean? It's like, what are like small incremental upgrades that aren't going to like destroy you, but it's going to make you feel like slightly better. Mm, that's a great one, huh? What are you going to upgrade? I've had it upgraded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're not allowed to say partner. You? You're, not allowed to, you're, not, you're not allowed to say I'm going to upgrade my partner. That's the yeah. only one you're not allowed to say. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that, so was, Josh, Josh that was next invited. on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's your definition of passive income? Because I know people get caught up on this. And what's been your experience with making passive income online? Like I was reading through someone else's definition the other day and it was, they were saying like a version of passive income is like when you have a service business or a coaching business, whatever. I don't think that's fully passive. I think there's like a spectrum of passive income where like right down, say like this ends, maybe you have like, you know, one-on-one coaching, but it's hard for me to even like, I don't even want to call it passive income spectrum, just an income spectrum. So down this end is like one-on-one, which is, you know, time for dollars. Which is zero percent passive. Zero <laughs> percent passive. And then the spectrum starts to change as you move here. So maybe you have like online courses, which are slightly more scalable. Um, and then, you know, what's like in the middle, would you say? Well, so, for us, like affiliate marketing is really passive yeah, like, because we get to do it once, create one thing <clears> and it generates income over and over and over again. So then like affiliate marketing is, you know, down this end of the spectrum. But if you combine that with like a traffic source, which is 100% passive, say for example, traffic from Google, which is, you know, you're not trying to get that traffic. You're not actively running ads or managing that or whatever. It's just every month because you're ranking on page one, you're just getting a certain amount of traffic that leads to sales. That's fully passive in my opinion, like all the way Mm -hmm. down this end of the spectrum. If you're asking the question of like, what's full passive income? I would say where well, you're not having to do anything in order to generate that money. Yeah. Like for affiliate marketing, obviously you're writing your reviews or you're writing the posts or you're shooting the content, right? But that's kind of where it ends. Whereas if you have coaching or courses or a membership site or whatever services, there's customer support, there's fulfillment, there's deliverables, there's all of these things, plus marketing, plus all the things that go into running a business in general. So for us, affiliate marketing just works so much better because the fulfillment side is just nixed. You yeah. have zero fulfillment, which is and like, customer and you have no customer support. So you just get to focus on creating content, serving the people you want to serve, creating impact and making bank. Just marketing. So um, for the affiliate marketing, how do you know what to choose to deal with or affiliate with? Yeah. So it depends on what type of affiliate marketing you're doing. We're doing three types of marketing or three strategies, essentially, using affiliate marketing. The first strategy is quite simple, which is like product reviews. So we're in like a space where we could talk about business-related tools, marketing-related tools, money, money, personal finance, all kinds of things. And so there's products there 
that we can promote. But that product firstly has to have an affiliate program. That's the number one thing. Because if they don't have an affiliate program, you can't actually get commissions for it. So that's the first step. Second step is we look to see if people are searching on Google for that particular product name. So let's say like a well-known product in our space is called Lead Pages, which is if you guys... Or we're using Zoom right now. Yep. Zoom, right? So Zoom is like Zoom meetings, for example. So they have an affiliate program. Um, it's pretty shit though. No, it's not great. It's... They should work on it. If they're, if they're listening <laughs> into us right now, they should, they should work on it. But we will go on to... I use a tool called Ahrefs. Yes. And they have a keyword explorer with Ahrefs. So I run a search for Zoom or Zoom meetings, whatever, on the keyword explorer. And it'll bring up anything. I can choose to bring up all keywords that have the word Zoom or Zoom meeting, Zoom webinar involved in it. And then that way I can see how much search volume there is on a monthly basis around keywords related to Zoom, Zoom meeting, Zoom webinar, whatever it is. So that's the next step. From there, it's pretty simple. It's like, you know, I want to like actually get the product and use the product so I can actually provide a good quality review. That's most important for me. I'd rather be truthful and honest in my reviews mm -hmm. than just promote everything and say everything is great. You lose trust then, right? Trust is the currency of affiliate marketing, yeah. I would say. Trust and, and yeah. traffic. Those are two yeah. key things. Yeah. So reviews is one. The second layer we do is we try and look for people who have like courses or software or whatever. And we do like short-term promotions with them, usually off the back of a webinar. So we'll run like some promotion in the lead up to it and then get people on a webinar and then they'll sell the back of the webinar. And then the third way is through larger, we don't do this very often, like twice a year, larger promotions. And these are like JV type, joint venture type promotions where there's a lot of different people involved and then launching a product and we'll get involved in that. Those are three ways. And the real key that we look for at least, especially in the case of like JV webinars, is they need to have their stuff dialed in, yeah. right? Like we're not promoting someone who's like, I'm going to launch my first course. <laughs> I don't know what my refund rate is or like what my onboarding is or what results I get people. Like we're looking for people who really have a proven track record and have a solid team and their stuff is really dialed in. So we know that it's worth coming on board and actually introducing our audience to it. Because the last thing we want to do is again, like bastardize that trust. Like I'm not going to send people to a free series that's really shallow and like thin on the content mm. or doesn't have a strong sales system off the back of it, doesn't have a strong support, customer support system. You know, like you look for certain mm. things that allow you to serve your audience in a better way by connecting them with cool entrepreneurs who have their systems dialed in. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So sort of acknowledge that you guys have just gone through BBD or James's mm -hmm. campaign. So that's really awesome because I also know that you guys went through his program and it's he, right? Like if you don't know the product, hard to be authentic about selling it. It's really of course. And we're going through it with our bonus group again. Yeah. So we're going through it week by week so that they're implementing it as well. Anyways, yeah. I just get lit up by that because we're like, we're all doing it together, guys. <laughs> it's so true. I think like <laughs> if you could take a stance and my most important thing is that I'm open, honest, and transparent Yeah. with this kind of stuff. Because the last thing we need is a whole bunch of people putting out fake reviews on the internet. Mm. There's enough of that. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure there's plenty of that already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's the moment when you knew your partner, Josh, was the one and that you wanted to be for life? Yeah. Tell Damn. Me. Tell <laughs> what was the moment you looked into my crystal blue eyes? Can we go back to talk about business? <laughs> <laughs> Easier. Oh, Easier. Geo, you can answer that for him first. No, 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 don't, don't let him, don't, let him even walk yeah, over don't let him off. He's going to answer that. I will refuse to answer until he answers. <laughs> it was... Mm -hmm. Let me finish. So I met Jill in Toronto and we hung out. We were in Toronto. I was only there for two weeks or so. And on the last night, we like went out that night. We stayed at a hotel that night. And then the next day, Jill dropped me off at the airport. And I remember like, you know, getting out. And we were just kind of like at that stage, we were like, yeah, you know, we'll keep in touch. Blah, we'll whatever. Skype. We'll Skype, you know, like maybe we'll keep in touch. And oh, I don't like doing these, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> so then I got a, <laughs> Get Josh to a bag out of the car. He's like, oh, God. Started walking towards the airport. And then I hear Josh. And I'm like, what did I forget? I forget something in the car. 
And so she got out of the car and she just wanted to come and give me one last kiss goodbye. Oh, yeah. so that was. Uh, that's when you knew you wanted to marry me. Well, that's like a different story. Oh, well, that's what they asked. Marry? Or well, you said when they I, get that, to be that, that was, alive. That was, that was when I knew oh, for life. Like that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like I don't yeah, feel like tough questions, man. Come on. I, I don't feel like there's like. And I'd be lying if I said, you know, there's like this one standout moment. There's like multiple moments when you're getting to know someone where you're like, oh, this is just really, you know, that was one of the moments that initially started that process of realizing she's the one, you know, and then there needs to be more of those (laughs) situations. To make sure sure this chick ain't crazy. (laughs) They keep adding up until you get to a point where you're like, yeah, this is definitely it. What about for you? What would you say like one of those would be? For sure at the cottage when the sky was orange. Oh. So we were at the cottage together and early. it was such a moment for me. And there was this huge storm. And then all of a sudden it just like, there was a break in the clouds and it was at sunset and the whole sky was like fire orange. And we were just having a, wow. a sexy moment together. And like my neighbor was playing like Billie Holiday. It was just such a like movie scene. And I was like, what is happening? But I remember thinking like, oh, this is so different. Why is this fool meeting? Like, why does he live in China? Why is he leaving <laughs> in a few days? Like, why did I have to meet him right now? That was definitely a moment. Another moment. Why is all of these like sexy moments? I've never, like, sure. another, <laughs> one was in, another one was in Vegas when we met back up before I moved to Australia because we kept up on Skype and we were like, let's hang out again. Like, how can we do that? You live in China. I live in Toronto. And I was like, what's in the middle of China and Toronto? And I was like, hmm. Vegas, <laughs> which, is, oh, which is not what? in the middle. <laughs> There's nothing in the middle. It was the ocean five hours for me, 13 for Josh. <laughs> That's middle enough. I didn't know it at the time. It was one of those moments where I was like, I hands down love this guy. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so, so cool. Oh, but I'm glad, I mean, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because this is the thing with nomads, right? We're meeting a lot of nomads and it's kind of like this question of, is it even possible to date as nomads? Because you kind of mm. hit it off somewhere on an island so and then crazy. it's like you go away for the next year, you know? Yeah. I think um, I said to Jill at the start, I said like, I want to travel. Like yeah. I want to continue to like live in different countries and stuff. And that was like a question I asked her. I said, do you want the same thing? And she was like, yeah, I definitely want that. And so I think that's like a good question to ask someone. Otherwise, like if you do want to be nomadic and that other person doesn't want to be, mm. you'll be the one dragging them around and then they're going to do you'll nothing but resent you. You'll come to a crossroads you. eventually where mm-hmm. you're like, one person's like, I don't want to move anymore. And the other person's like, but we had this combo. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes at the start too, people aren't fully honest when they start relationships. Like they'll just say whatever they need yeah, to say. It's like, of course I want course, to travel. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, take off your clothes. <laughs> 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 Definitely not with us. Yeah, with some motivation. Um, so, <laughs> so what's been like the biggest challenge for you guys with trying to run and build that business and maintain a great relationship at the same time? Mm. This is a good question. Pre Kai, I'm going to say. Oh, pre Kai? Yeah. Communication. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say as well. I think the, I don't know if you agree with me on this one, but I, I think not. probably not. <laughs> but I think the main thing is. If you want that other person to be a certain way, you have to be that way first. Mm. And so instead of trying to like change the other person, just change yourself and focus on improving yourself. And then that person will change as a result of that. For me, so, I think it's also patience is a big thing, right? Like when you're working together, living together, running your life together, so much is intertwined. It's so easy to get on each other's nerves when you're together 24-7, right? You're running a business together. You're doing all the things together. But patience is what will allow that person to have space to like be who they want to be and like just loving them no matter what. you know. And if you can't love them no matter what, then having that conversation to be like, I'm really coming up against some resistance here that I need to either talk through, solve, or like we need to figure out what our future looks yeah, like. Yeah, I think it's always good to kind of recalibrate and say like, look, here's what I'm doing. If you're feeling like you're the one who is progressing more than the other person in the relationship, I think it's important to communicate that and say like, you know, I'm working on myself, trying to progress in this area, but I feel like you're not doing the same thing. I feel like you're just kind of happy, you know, staying in the current situation you're in right now. You don't want to keep growing. 
I think it's important to have those conversations because ultimately you want to stay aligned. And the only way to stay aligned is if you guys are moving in the same direction at the same speed. Because if you're not, if one person is going slower than the other, it's always going to feel a bit of resentment will show up. Or worst case scenario is you're going in like different directions. I don't think we've ever gone in different directions. Mm -hmm. There's definitely been times where like Jill's been speeding up a bit more as far as improving yourself than I have and then vice versa. But ultimately, we're constantly trying to stay aligned with the direction we're moving Mm -hmm. in. And we have really honest combos, even if they're hard. But that's the only way to really get an A++ relationship is to have the hard combos. Yeah, exactly. You love hard convos, don't you? Of course, of course. That's where you either break and uh, be stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Definitely. Fair, you are listening to the Founders Connect podcast, helping lifestyle entrepreneurs to grow their business online and create a happier marriage. Now back to the show. So what's the best tip for building sexual intimacy? No, here you go. Oh. It's from a <laughs> yeah. Alcohol. <laughs> oh, really? Still? Well, like, it always makes it funner. (laughs) You know, I think, like, obviously what it is, is... I'd say trust. Like, sex is, like, super emotional. Mm. And I think it's super important. Anytime where, like, our sex life has gone up or down, it's usually coincided with, like, how we're feeling about each other at the time. Mm. And so, like, if I'm, like, frustrated or whatever in business or in my life, essentially, then that's going to affect how I show up in our sex life. And probably vice versa, if you're feeling just like kind of off or whatever, like it's more about like trying to create balance in your life. So then you actually like feel good. And when you feel good, I think sex is just an indicator of you feeling good and how good you feel at that time. Mm. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good one because we've had this kind of conversation and it's about personal identity as well. Like, Mm. right. So if I'm not feeling like, okay, I just... (laughs) <laughs> why don't I just bear my soul here but I will um, so, so you know like I've been gaining a lot of weight because of the stress of building a business and then I don't feel like I'm that guy when we were dating the same sort of physical guy right and so yeah. that sort of impacted how I show up in our sexual life because I'm like I don't feel like I'm that guy anymore and I'm yeah. not attractive you know and then this is probably sounding weird that a guy is talking about this stuff but that's reality that's okay for yeah. sure yeah. Yeah. for sure You know what? I mean, one of the best books I've ever read for just allowing yourself to move through the feels we all get when putting ourselves wildly outside of our comfort zone, aka building a business, is a book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, yeah. Because he really helps you identify where you're like... I'm unattractive because I'm stressed out, because I've gained weight, because I'm stressed out, because I'm building a business. But like, that is all just stories or beliefs that we're holding. And there's so many better beliefs or stories we could tell ourselves if we just had the tools to be able to self-regulate our thoughts and switch them up when we do find ourselves in that mode of thinking. And I find, or I have found, I mean, I'm on my third round of listening to it because I love it so much. I listen to it on all my morning workouts. Side note, never in my life did I ever think I would listen to a book on neuroscience while working out, like WTF around that. I love it. But like, that's the new me. <laughs> what do you listen to when you work out? Oh, a book on neuroscience. <laughs> it really gets me jacked. Um, <laughs> but it's given me the tools to consciously create the beliefs I actually want to have and the stories I want to tell myself about my own personal experience and our relationship and our business and all the things. And so when you have those tools in your life, I feel like you become unstoppable because you just nix all those things that you're telling yourself and it allows you to create this like best version of yourself. I think diet and exercise helps as well. You just have more energy. As I said, I just think it's just coincides with how you feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're really good at making yourself feel good, whether that be through like, you know, doing external things like improving your diet and exercising more often, or you do a lot of inner work through books like Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. As soon as you start feeling better about yourself, you're right. It's what you were saying before. As soon as you feel better about yourself, maybe that's the aphrodisiac that we all just need to think about is just making yourself feel good. Well, so then that flows on to how you appear and show up for your team and your business and for your clients yeah. and all that too, it's right? Everything. Yeah. Totally. Good. So what activities and common interests have you developed to bring you closer together 
activities. Um, we had a <laughs> apart from the second time, we got that <laughs> from a baby. Is having a baby an <laughs> activity? Is that, is that counted? You, I, I you know what's funny? Going. Yeah. Like, so Jill, I feel like this is starting to change you. We first met. She hate, hated I, games. I knew hated it was going to be games. Like, I knew it games. because I just played two games the other day. All kinds of I hated them, thing. right? <laughs> and I'm the opposite. Like, I love sports. I love playing games. I really enjoy it. And I think over the years, I've managed to break you down <laughs> and open you up. Because, yeah, I mean, we sat and I taught you how to play chess. Yeah, like, the other wow. day. quite possibly. The wow, boring. chess. But you quite enjoyed it. Yeah. And then we played some Scrabble. Yeah, so I think like I could see us doing more of that, but I think the main activity is travel for yeah, us. For That's sure. what's, what has really. I was going to say, like just... our answers make us sound like we're seventy four. So you <laughs> saved it there with the travel because we're like, we like playing chess we and played. Scrabble. We play yeah. and just <laughs> this is the old man right. here. Hey, uh, there's nothing wrong with playing games. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so talk about our third member of the family now. So, how has Kai changed you as human beings? And I guess your view of the world or the view of life and business. I know you've mentioned Three, you, know, you kind of changed the made, model based on that. He three makes words. my heart smile. Three words. Oh. What will your three words be? How you changed? Mm, so I slowed said. down. So I don't know how to put that into one word. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> he made me slow down. Yeah. I don't know a better way to describe it. I feel like my heart smiles. Like mm. he just right on. lit up my life. And Again, to quote Denise Duffield Thomas, she said, babies bring abundance. And it always stuck with me. And I was like, what does she mean by that? Um, and then he got here and I was like, I get it. I get it, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> so abundant, joyful, and calmer. Yeah. Mine would be patience, definitely. Another one would be presence. Yes. Like I feel like I can be more present now. I can put down my phone or my laptop or whatever and just sit and hang out and do what babies do, which is not really that much, but still, it's interesting. The reason we put our laptop down is if we don't, he smashes all the keys. Yeah. Keep it real. <laughs> and then um, third one, I would say he's made our life more efficient. Prior to having him, we were just working a lot for the sake of working. Hmm. We weren't like actually efficient. We were just doing a lot of stuff. Whereas now it's like, you know, we were Friday, car day. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we spent with our son. And so... You know, Monday to Thursday, more efficient. Today, today and yesterday, super efficient what we did. And that's only getting better and better as he gets older, which yeah. is good. Well, it sounds like all good, isn't it? Yeah, I know you want to have a baby. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I get her case for her. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> Sorry, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, just a couple more questions to wrap up. Now, let's talk a bit about money mindset because I know this one is a big one for entrepreneurs, certainly for some. Did you always have the same values or views on money and no. how do you approach no. that in your relationship it's evolved yeah definitely i was much more frivolous with money when i came into this relationship i was a bartender so i always had like lots of cash on me and so i just my favorite thing to do was spend money on going out for dinner and drinks drop hundreds of dollars and be like who cares and then we started a business together and started pooling our money in I became much more responsible over time. You know, I think there's like a, I'm sure I've been talking about this a lot recently, but I think there's a difference between like, say money mindset that a lot of people talk about and then like spending habits. When I think of money mindset now, I just think like, do you have an abundant mentality? Like, do you think abundantly? Do you feel like that you can always make money if you need to? I think that's to me would be the definition of money mindset. And then I think, a lot of people try and combine bad spending habits with thinking, I'm going to spend lots of money because that makes me feel abundant. But I'm like, no, this is just a bad habit. So I think you can feel abundant without like constantly spending all of your money all the time. I think that's just a bad spending habit. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to like clear that up. But there's definitely been an evolution because both of us come from... You're more white collar than I am, but I'm definitely a blue collar background. My dad worked at three jobs. Mum was like a librarian. Five kids, never took a vacation, rarely went out for dinner or did anything, basically. And if you did, it was like Sizzler. If we did, it was like Sizzler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, Sizzler. Oh, cheapest option we could. Moving from there to a completely different mindset, a much more abundant mindset, whereas, you know, back then it was like money doesn't go on trees. Like, no, you can't have a Magnum. You have to have a Puddle Pop instead, even though I really wanted the Magnums. So Australian. <laughs> but it was like moving <laughs> from that mentality to being like, no, like 
I can have the Magna if I want yeah. to. I can make lots of money. I am able to do that. I think one aspect too, growing up in Australia, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but there's the tall poppy syndrome oh, yeah. mentality, which is like it's bad to be wealthy or it's bad to have lots of money because it means you screwed someone over in order to get that money. And it took me a long time to get over that. That was a very limiting belief that I think a lot of Australians hold. Not just Australians because a lot of different people in different countries have the same thing. I was talking to my friend down in the States and he was telling me about the analogy that he grew up with, which is like the crabs in the bucket analogy, which is like, apparently if you have crabs in the bucket, you don't have to put a lid on the bucket because the other crabs, as one tries to pull out, the other crabs will pull them down. So like, I realized that this is more of a global kind of thing, but I just think it's much more ingrained in Australian culture than anywhere else. There you go. Yeah, Yeah, that is great. Cool. So... What are some of the beliefs business owners need to adopt in order to hit the first 100K? Mm, One thing I think for sure, a belief you absolutely have to have is that your success is inevitable. Mm. If not, you're going to sabotage yourself so many different ways. Uh But if you believe that your success is inevitable, you will always take these intentional actions that lead you down that path towards that first 100K. Yeah, I think another one you have to get clear on is that business is simple. Business is easy. Because I think at the start, when people get started in business, they think that it's going to be this really complicated thing. And so they overcomplicate it and they get nothing done. And so their business doesn't succeed. So if you want to cross their 100K, you have to have a really simple business in order to get there and just realize that it's not difficult. It's meant to be simple. And it could be as easy as build an audience, sell them what they want. That's it. Two steps. Right? Like, obviously, there's more steps involved in those, but (laughs) it can be that simple. Build an audience, sell them what they want. Yeah. The one you said before, I think, is if you can ingrain this belief into you as an entrepreneur moving forward, the better it gets, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the better it gets, the better it gets. I think that's very important because generally what happens is someone will get started and they'll start making money and then they'll start subconsciously telling themselves like, oh man, when's the other shoe going to drop? You know, mm, yeah. like this, like is, too, this is too easy. Up? This is too easy. It's all going to collapse and I'm going to go back to how it was before. So if you can adopt a mentality of the better it gets, the better it gets, as opposed to when's the other shoe going to drop, that's going to help a lot. Mm. Yeah, that's such a good one because I sort of, in coming up <clears> in my cultural background, it's like it resonates in the sense that I feel a sense of guilt even. It's like, I just made, you know, a hundred bucks from an affiliate site. Like, I feel like I haven't actually done anything to earn that. It's just a weird thing and you go, oh shit. (laughs) I reckon reading that book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, because he talks a lot about the feelings of guilt and what it does to just your system in general. It's just so key because most people don't even realize that they carry the feelings of guilt. It's just their go-to nature. Yeah. Um, But that just repels all the good shit that you want to attract in your life. Quick question. Do you, when you feel guilty, relay that back to a time in your life where someone else made you feel guilty? Not in that moment, but now I have done a process like that before. So that's a good question. And I have, yeah, what's coming to my mind is walking out like I went on a date with one of my ex-girlfriends and my mom was like, where are you guys going? Why don't you just stay home? Why are you going to dinner and blowing money on dinner? You know, mm-hmm. what's the point of that? Money doesn't grow on yeah. trees kind of thing. Yeah. So I was That saying- money's finite, right? That's probably mm-hmm. another belief people have to have to hit their first 100K is that money is infinite. Money is consciousness. Yeah, like if you can... I mean, most of the people who succeed really quickly succeeded because they had these amazing abundant mentalities. And, you know, some people got lucky in life where where they grew up in a family where the parents like taught them how to feel abundant and how to think abundantly. And so for them, when they go to start business, all of a sudden you see these people go from like nothing to like a million dollars, you know, within their the first... Their baseline is abundance. Yeah, their baseline is abundance. They go from like nothing to a million dollars like so quickly and they're just like, what? Isn't this normal? <laughs> what, you guys <laughs> this? Exactly, isn't it? That's the abundance mindset. Yeah. So once you adopt that, like that, I think that's like the, the game changer. I mean, we're definitely not there. Yeah. Yeah. Working we're, on we're it. There. Yeah. So I, I'm just on a sort of before the last question, Cindy's waiting for that question. So I'm observing a dynamic between the two of you. And to me, it's like, if I have to describe you, sort of Josh is like the scientist and then, and oh, then, totally. then oh, and, uh, Jill is like the artist. 
But when you talk, this is an interesting thing. So I'm listening to you feeling through this interview here and I'm like, okay, actually you guys are very present to this. I don't know if it's law of attraction. You talk about Joe Disperenza and you're really in this mindset world. I know James Wedmore is a huge proponent of this and his mm-hmm. business kind of switched at some point. It went to you know, very yeah. technical YouTube marketing to then it was like, I'm talking about all this woo-woo stuff. Yeah. Um, so were you always like that, both of you? Or was, was this is no. when did you get to that point? Recently. I'd 12, say. Last like 12 last, months. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. Easily, for sure. As we started, things started feeling off for us probably this time last year. We just couldn't put our finger on it. We just thought we were stressed because we were about to have a baby. Blame it on that guy. But what we realized was we were just unaligned. And so it's been about a 12-month process of getting clear on like, how do we want to think? How do we want to feel? Who do we want to be? And like learning the strategies to be able to implement that and develop that as your way of being. And it's for me, mostly, I would say hands down, easily the last three months have been my most transformative mindset, energy, showing up, Definitely. identity. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. But before that, absolutely, scientists are very much like <laughs> you know, you know behind what, the scenes, in front of the scenes, or like if you were to think about us before how we split our roles, oh, yeah. it was yeah. very much like Josh is mm. the tech guy and Jill's the one who's like the face. The face. Yeah. 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 Now we're actually just both being the face. Yeah. Like we realized if you want to run a business and we're a co-CEO role. CEO so, co's? CEO co's. And so you have that. to like, <laughs> you have to step into that. So if you're not stepping into that visionary role right now, then you got to really start focusing on that. You know what's interesting about the reason why I feel like we fully adopted it in the last 12 months? Because prior to that, like we, I felt the same way. I was like, this is all just kind of weird. Like, you know, like I need to see it to believe it. And all this kind of stuff. And I feel like the thing that actually helped us cross that divide was logic, was science. And it started by reading that book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. <laughs> it's going to be because, the theme of what we're talking about. Because prior to that, like, I tried to adopt like, this faith based mentality around like, law of attraction and you know, like, crystal healing and all this kind of stuff. But I just couldn't. I just kept coming back to a baseline of being like, I just don't know if I believe it. And that's fair because. I think it's good. Like Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who wrote that book, he says that science is the contemporary language language of of mysticism, mysticism, right? Right. It's like, it's the thing that explains mysticism. It's the thing that demystifies all of these questions that we have. And I think that's nothing wrong with that. And so if you're sitting there and I I felt bad, I felt like there was something wrong with me that I just couldn't have faith Mm. to just believe these things because someone told me. But maybe that's actually a strength. Maybe it's a strength that you can actually search for the answers and you can actually demystify it. And then once you do demystify it through science and understanding of it on a more logical level, then it really absorbs in. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm really understanding exactly you know, how my brain works, how my body works, how everything works as far as like energy and everything like that goes from more of a scientific basis than anything. Yeah. And I would love, I would love to talk more about this kind of stuff. I think this is such an interesting conversation to have and I could sit here for the next two hours and talk about it, but we've got a baby. So (laughs) (laughs) So eventually he's going to ruin the party. (laughs) We don't mind Kai. All right. So last question. So after all said and done, what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for living the way that everyone else wants to live, but they don't have the guts or they're too afraid to make that decision. I think if there's anything that I could do is I could live a certain way to inspire others to realize that, hey, it's okay. It's okay to close down a $300,000 membership. It's okay to quit your job because you know there's other things you can do in life. It's okay to go for what you want. It's okay to go for what you want. There's nothing wrong with that. And I actually think if more of us were doing that, if the whole planet was actually like aligning themselves with what they really wanted to do. We would progress so much faster. The world would be such a better place. You know, like people are so... The things that bring down society is scarcity. Wars are fought over scarcity, fought over resources, all this kind of stuff. If the whole world thought abundantly, man, we'd be out in the stars by now. We'd all have mentalities like Elon Musk, who's just like, I want to make everyone a multi-planetary species. You know, we'd have a completely different mentality. We treat each other so much better. And I think if I could just live that way 
and without having to force someone else to do it because that's not the way to do it as well. But just live that way to just show them be like, the example. you know, this is possible. You can be this way if you want to. I think that's a good way to live your life. I'm pretty much right up there with what Josh is saying. I want to be the person who, not that people need permission to do what they want to do in their life, but if they feel like they do, I want to be the one who's like, here's the permission you don't need. But like, if you need that cheerleader in your corner, like, I'm here, bro. I'm telling you, you can go for it. Um, And giving the permission they need to go after what they want. And I've been trying to have this conversation where like when people come to me and they're like, things aren't working or like my business just feels heavy. And I'm like, what do you want? Hmm. Right. It's such a simple question, but it carries so much weight Oh yeah, because not everyone wants to answer it because once you've answered, what do I actually want? Right. Then you have to actually go ahead and either decide, okay, I'm going to stay where I am and not go after what I want. I'm just going to play it safe. Or now that I have this clarity and I know what I want, I'm going to go for it unapologetically. You know what I mean? I'm just going to say like, fuck it. Mm. This is exactly what I want. I'm not afraid of what people are going to say or if they may judge me or what may happen because what do I have to lose, right? Like, okay, cool. You may stumble along the way you're learning along that process. You may piss a few people off. Okay, cool. Now you're learning who matters. You know what I mean? Like when it all boils down to it, you really have nothing to lose by going after what you want. And I would love to be the person who encourages or empowers people to know that they have all the permission they need to actually do what they want to do. Amazing. Um, yes. Well, I can see, definitely see the alignment between the two of you. So yeah, that's, that's you really go. awesome. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, just for our listeners, you guys have a free course, affiliate marketing or something like that. Mm. Um, where can yeah. That? Um, well, you just go to our website, screwthenumber5.com. All spelled out, no numbers. That's available there. I don't know how long that's going to be available for because we are looking to adjust that opt-in there. You do have to opt in in order to get this free course. But it's pitch free, nothing to sell, just mad value. Uh, yeah, we just put it there because I just think it's an easy way for someone if they're just looking to create a little bit of passive income just to kind of get the party started, get things going. I think it's like one of the best ways of doing it. And that's going to be available in that course. Awesome. And uh, well, I'm we are students of the 90 day traffic and we've been doing that and implementing that. So uh, nice. we're in, and we're in the screw group. And so we love what's happening in there and, and just how transparent you guys are. So I wanted to acknowledge you for the journey that you're on and just how you're showing up in the world because you are making a difference. Yes, you are. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. That's and so sweet. Appreciate you guys too. And you guys had some really fantastic questions as well, which I cannot say about every podcast I go on, but um, I really enjoyed these questions today. Awesome. The goal was to make Josh sweat, so I think we that, that happened. <laughs> Did I? He's, he's what a question. Unshakable. We talked about yeah. sex, do we? Yeah, that one. Because <laughs> my parents were in the other room, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So hit subscribe, hit share, and uh, make sure you check out scooter 9 to fivecom We'll see you guys real soon. Okie dokie, that was our conversation with Jill and Josh Stanton from scooter 9 to 5 Cindy, what was your main takeaway? Oh, I've taken away quite a few things, but I think the main and the most important thing is mindset. What do you mean by that? What was the lesson from them? So mindset is basically when you have uh, an abundant mindset, then everything will flow abundantly. And uh, if you don't have that, then you will all find that your mindset of a struggle will always hold you back. So has that changed for you recently or why is that? To me, you've always been that person where it's like, you know, oh, I've never worked a day in my life. It's always been, I've been always enjoyed it and whatever it is. So has that changed recently? Like what's the experience? I've always had that mindset, but because of the experience that I felt that I haven't got, I'm not the expert or I have experience in that area. I just let the person that have the experience in the area lead me and By uh, following that, I felt that I wasn't back into my original mindset of what you just mentioned. Okay, so what are we going to do about it? So basically, um, we just have to work together to uh, break our mindsets and have a joint mindset of abundance. Love it. So the thing that was... So standing out to me right now, actually it happened after the interview was over um, <laughs> because Josh and Jill being the amazing people they are kind of gave us a impromptu coaching <laughs> conversation and just shared 
something that they've been really working on, which is this whole thing around mindset. And something that now Josh is, for those who don't get it, he's very scientific. So for him, he doesn't really believe in the, the whole energy attraction thing and law of attraction, all these different things. So he had to find a way to understand what a lot of successful people are saying when they talk about these concepts. Yes. And uh, one of the things that both Josh and Joe have been working on is now that I think about it, I notice it now that they are both becoming the front and the face of the company. So it used to be Joe in the front, Josh was hidden in the background as the IT guy. But in the last year, it, it's shifted to them both showing up on podcasts together, on interviews. They're both leading in different ways and really sharing that this is a combined vision and a combined purpose. And that's alignment. So I think that's something that we've been talking about. And like Jill, I think it was Jill, Josh said, you know, you have to step up into that and believe that and show that. So both have tried that. They didn't really say it, but we got the message. And so the key takeaway from all of this is it's not about just building a business for the sake of building a business. And all these strategies and affiliate stuff, which is all cool, more important behind all that is who are you becoming and who are you and what do you want to become and how can you create the life and the business that supports and shows that. Yeah, so basically be an example of what you want to be or what you want to see in the world. Awesome. Well, thank you uh, for listening and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Are you thinking about leaving your job, taking control of your own destiny and turning your passion and experience into a side hustle or full-time business? Well, check out our new corporate escape plan, PDF Guide. It's free and you'll learn the top 10 challenges for new entrepreneurs and what you can do to overcome them. Just head over to foundersconnect.co forward slash escape to grab the free checklist now. Yeah, do it. Join us in our next episode where we talk about 10 marketing tasks that you can outsource to a virtual assistant so that you can save yourself 10 to 20 hours a week to focus on the things that matter in your business. Thanks for tuning in and remember to live passionately, purposefully and confidently. Till next time.